Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem number one, two sum. This is also one of the most popular interview questions, so you're definitely going to want to know this one if you don't already know it. I just want to say before we read the question prompt, if this is your first time trying lead code and you've opened the site and you've tried, you know, problem number one, and you have absolutely no idea how to solve it, or maybe you've done the naive solution and it wasn't accepted and you're like, what the hell? I just want to say that we all started here. We all opened up lead code some years ago. We all tried to some, we struggled with it. We had no idea how to solve it. And we thought, how am I ever going to get into Facebook, Google, Amazon on, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But what I want to tell you is that be patient with it, solve these questions, understand the solutions, stay consistent. And one day you will pass that interview, you will get that job offer and you will sign and you will work at Fang, but you have to keep with it. And you know, no one is a genius from day one. We all had to go through the struggle. We all had to pay our dues and we all have been through the leak code grind. So stay with it and you'll have that Fang job in no time. Cool. That being said, let's read the question prompt. Given an array of integers nums and an integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. Let's look at an example here. So if we were given the array 2, 7, 11, 15, and our target was 9, we should return 0 and 1. Why is that? Well, we can see that the 0th index is 2, and the first index is 1, and 2 plus 7 oops, equals to 9, right? So we found two elements that add up to nine. And remember, we're looking for the indices. So that's why I return zero, one. We could also return one, zero, because remember, the answer can be returned in any order. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's look at another example. We have, you know, three, two, four, and our target is six. Um, so we should return one and two, because the two and the four, which, you know, two plus four equals to six, occurs at one and two. Again, we could return two one if we wanted to, it doesn't matter because the answer can be returned in any order. How might we actually solve this problem? Well, the simplest way to solve this problem and probably what most of you have tried to do it on your first time is doing it the naive solution. And it probably wasn't accepted because it's actually not a very fast algorithm. Essentially what you wanna do is, you know, for each element in the array, we're gonna iterate, you know, over the array and we're going to say, OK, for each element, is there an element in, you know, to the right of my current element such that, you know, the target, which in this case is nine minus the current element, is there, you know, a seven in the array? And if we find it, then, you know, that's our solution. We can return the index that the seven occurs at and we can return the index that, you know, our current iteration is at and we return it. Otherwise, you know, we move on to the next one and then search to its right and then move on to the next one and search to its right until we find a solution. And for this problem, um, we're guaranteed to have exactly one solution, so we don't have to worry about not finding it. The reason that this algorithm isn't the best and the reason why it's not accepted by LeetCode probably is that it's actually a big O of N squared solution because for every element, you're basically searching over the array. And since we're touching every element, which is gonna be a big O of N operation and then searching the rest of the array, this is also going to be, you know, a big O of N operation. So that's where we get the big O of N squared. And we don't want to go with the solution because usually quadratic solutions are not good. Some questions, the best you can do is quadratic, but for this one, we can actually do much better. So let's think about a better way to do this. And we're going to solve this problem using a dictionary, which is a very common data structure that you're going to encounter for most leak code problems. Um, so what we want to do <clears throat> is we're going to use a dictionary. And what is our dictionary going to hold? Well, I propose that we hold a number as the key and the value will be the index that we've seen it at. And why do we want to do this? Well, every time we iterate through a number, uh, when we go from left to right, we can see, okay, for that number, have we seen whatever target minus my current number is? If it's in our dictionary here, which we're going to be storing all the values that we've seen so far and the index that they occur at, then what we can do is we can say, okay, we found two numbers that add up to our target. So what we want to do is build up this dictionary as we go. So let's go through an example here. And actually this one is quite simple. 
So we'll start at the two, right? We'll iterate from left to right, and we'll start at the two, and obviously this is index zero, this is one, two, and three. So we start at index zero, which is the two. We're gonna say, okay, is there a nine minus two in my dictionary? No, it's empty, so that means that we haven't found a solution yet. So at this point, we're gonna say, okay, well, we've seen a two though, and we've seen it at the zeroth index. Cool. So now we can process, we can continue with our iteration. So now we're here at the seven. So now we say, okay, have we seen nine minus seven? And is this in our dictionary? Yes, it is. We've seen, you know, the two before, and it was at the zeroth index, which means that, you know, we can return the index that the seven is at and the index that we saw the two at. So our solution would be either, you know, one, zero, or we could return because order doesn't matter, zero, one. Right, so that's how we're gonna solve it. Uh, the reason that this solution is efficient is because we only go from left to right one time. Whereas in the previous solution, what we were doing is, you know, for every element while we were going from left to right, we were then going, you know, from that element to its right uh, a second time. So basically we were, you know, parsing over the same elements over and over. So this is inefficient. So the dictionary solution is actually gonna take us down to a big O of n runtime because every time we only go through the list once and then looking up a key in a dictionary is gonna be a big O of one uh, operation and then adding something to a dictionary is also gonna be a big O of one operation. So we don't have to worry about any extra time complexity there. Um, that being said, that's basically how we wanna solve this problem conceptually, but now let's go to the code editor and actually write the code so you can see how to implement it you know, using actual code. So I'll see you back in the editor. We're back in the editor. Now let's write the code. So remember that we said we wanted to use a dictionary to basically store the indices of every value that we've seen so far. So let's define that variable. So we'll call it index dict and we'll set it equal to an empty dictionary for now. And what we want to do is remember we wanted to iterate through the numbers in our you know given nums and we want to basically check if we've seen target minus that number if it's in our index dictionary, if it is, then we can return the index um, that it occurred at and the current index that we were at for our iteration. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say for i num in enumerate nums. So enumerate in Python will basically give us the current index that we're at and the number of the uh, or and the value of the, the thing that we're um, iterating at for that index. Um, you don't have to use enumerate. But this way, since we need the index, typically you wanna use enumerate here. So we're going to say the value that we wanna search is going to be equal to our target minus the current number. And we're gonna say if to search in our index dictionary. So basically if we've seen that number before, that means that we now have two numbers that add up to our target. So we can simply return whatever our current index, which is i, and the index that that um, to search value occurred at, which remember in our index dictionary, the key will be the number and the value will be the, um, the index that it occurred at. So we just want to return here um, index dictionary of to search. Oops, to search. Ugh, God, I can't spell. Okay. And then we are guaranteed to basically find a solution to this problem. So we will find it within our for loop. Now, if we weren't able to find to search, the last thing that we need to do is actually just update our index dictionary to show that we've seen um, our number before. So we're simply gonna say index dictionary of num is going to be, we've seen it at the current index i. And that's really all we have to do. Let us submit this and double check that it works, which it does. Now let's talk about the time and space complexity, which if you don't already know is a very important part of any coding interview question. As soon as you write your code, what you wanna do is one, dry run your solution, which we did earlier, so we'll skip that now because we've already kind of walked through how we're gonna solve it. Um, and the second thing is to talk about the time and space complexity. You wanna do these things proactively. You don't want your interviewer telling you, hey, can you tell me the time and space complexity? Um, you wanna just immediately say it on your own. It shows that you're taking the initiative, you understand that time and space complexity is an important part of any you know, writing code in the real world. You need to you know, understand the operations that you're performing and the code that you're shipping into production. 
So being able to talk about this proactively is a very good signal for your interviewer uh, as to your coding skills. That being said, what is the time complexity for this algorithm? Well, remember that you know we're simply going from left to right in our numbers. And the worst case is going to be where the two numbers that add up to our target are going to be the second to last and last elements in our array because we'll have to traverse the entirety of the array up until that you know last element to, sh to prove that we've actually found the numbers and it's going to be occurring at the last element and the second to last element so we'd have to get through basically the entire array to find our solution so because of that our time complexity is going to be big o of n because we'd have to traverse the entirety of the array Usually it might happen faster, but we work with worst time complex, uh, worst case complexities when we do our analysis here. So, similar to the reason why our time complexity was big O of n, our space complexity is also going to be big O of n because if we have to get to the point where the entirety of the array is parsed, uh, then we would have to store the indexes for each number in our dictionary. And since you know we would only find our solution at the very last element in our array, that means we have to basically store every single number and its index in our dictionary here. So that's why our space complexity would be big O of n. So that is how you solve leak code problem number one. Hopefully, you know this is the start of your leak code journey. It's okay if you didn't understand how to solve this question. You know it will come over time. You have to stay consistent. You have to stay with it. You can't give up. Um, you know, everybody starts here. Everybody's frustrated with two sum. Nobody gets this stuff, you know, day one. Nobody just walks into a fang company. You have to pay your dues. You have to do the grind. We've all done it. We've all been there. We've all achieved the offer after, you know, countless hours of studying, preparing, doing the same questions over and over again. It is a grind, it is painful, but the reward at the end of the tunnel is so lucrative um, that you know this is just something you have to do. Um, so best of luck out there. Watch my other videos if you're prepping for your interviews and you have trouble with some of the questions. And uh, happy leak coding.